It's like, send it to some people who are qualified to- And get the true information. If you just leave it open to someone to tell you whether they like the song or not, they're not going to give you the information that you can use. You might want certain information like, did you like the song? Yes or no? Rate it one out of 10. What did you like about it? Did you value the production or did you value the songwriting? Was the melody? Was the chorus memorable? So get the real information behind why someone is moved by your song much better than just getting general information like yeah i like your song it was good the song in the car would you listen to the song in the shower going on a run how does all this rank up even if it's only 10 people but like you know out of 10 where does all of this average good i like that see it's interesting like that's part of the process and it strikes me as fun and enjoyable the thing that i always need to put in is like okay there's a great idea but then focus the idea i was like let's just ask questions you're like let's put a little more focus on it let's ask designated questions to get like specific answers and i wouldn't have thought of that so thank you if you have a song and 10 out of 10 people say that they would listen to it while they're in the gym then immediately you say okay let me figure out who does gym and fitness playlists I love your fitness videos your fitness videos are amazing they're awesome you always have such upbeat music i wrote this song and it made me think of you and i think it would be amazing if you just happen to use this song in your next workout video blah, 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 blah. fitness studios and being like hey like do you guys make your own playlists or whatever for the for the workouts for zumba for rumba or whatever it's called or <laughs> Pilates, whatever, you know, and get your song put into those things. So that now it's like integrated into a cultural thing. That's what that kind of information can help you like target and figure out. That's really good. Other thing too, is someone says they want to take 50% of production or points. And he was like, yeah, like 50, 50 split. Is that like common? 50, 50 split is how I do everything. He says I keep like a hundred percent for the song writing, like in terms of the lyrics. Cause I wrote the lyrics. He didn't write any lyrics, okay. but he's, and a 50 50 split so curious like how does that work then let's say we got paid like a hundred dollars does that mean i make 50 and he makes 50 of the whole song bmi does it like a hundred hundred so the bmi writes it out like it's a hundred percent on the publishing side it's a hundred percent on the songwriting side and so if you do a 50 50 split and there's two writers one of the right angie faith would get 50 percent producer would get 50 percent and then there's the publishing they get 100 percent. and all together that makes 200 percent if you're on ASCAP, what they'll say is the whole song is 100%. There's 50% over here that's publishing. There's 50% over here. This is the song. You split this in half, you get 25, 25, and then publishing is 50. That makes 100%. Getting a clear understanding of what the different types of royalties are, how you earn from each one, what companies and organizations you need to be registered with to collect from each, that's important. And if you don't know that, then I'll you know, we'll set up some time to figure that out before, yeah. you know, you actually go release something. So when he says 50, 50, like that's standard and I just need to give that to him. What do you do? You produce a track. Yeah. I love this then, yeah. I did pay him. Then you shouldn't split it. If you like, paid so him, it should be deemed a work for hire. But if you have not given him a work for hire form and he has not signed it, this wasn't clearly expressed. So it's important to clearly express ever, all intentions before ever entering the space of creating yeah. the art. You want to do all this stuff in advance. And the best yeah. way to do it is typically in an email. It's like, hey, I'm going to be coming to your studio tomorrow just to make sure, like, you know, we're going to do a work for hire or whatever. You know, just like whatever the stipulations are, just send in an email and then just tell them to confirm back, yes. Get to the studio just before we start anything. Can you confirm that email? And you yeah. don't start working until someone confirms the email. You might have to take it on the chin. Is he offering you some kind of special discount or anything like that? A home studio. He's he usually charges like a hundred an hour. He's charging me 60. He only charges 200 for mix and master. It's like 700 bucks up front. Oh, yeah. I know that we talked about this. Yeah. Moving forward, just please don't do this anymore. Because for $700, you could have got everything you need. You could have got a microphone. You could have got... Uh, interface and DAW to record in and headphones. But do I have like the proper room to record in? Like None of that matters. No one can hear any of that stuff. People are listening on shitty like headphones like this and they're listening to a compressed file that they're streaming on top of that. And a lot of people are listening on Bluetooth headphones. You're taking a file, you're crunching it down. Spotify doesn't even have lossless audio. So they're listening to a crap audio file there. Then it's got to transfer through Bluetooth crap and get into your crap headphone. 
no one is going to hear it. Most people have no idea sonically what the differences are. Again, this anxiety, you're worried about things that like don't exist. This is like in your imagination, you think that it matters, but it doesn't matter. When you listen to a record and I don't care who sung on it, are you like, I know what microphone they sung on? I know what kind of room they were sitting in? No. No, no one knows. So basically, if I had done the vocals and guitar at home, I could have sent him the stems. Then he could do the mixing and like whatever he charges for mixing and mastering with 200 instead of seven. And then you would get this. And then I would ask for the session file back, open it up and see exactly what he did. And then just buy the plugins that he used. And now you have that. If I were going to even go through that process, I would go to a real legitimate recording studio with a seasoned professional engineer and have them do it. So that that way you could take their vocal chains and you can take their stuff. And, and now you have it, it's yours. And you never need to go back to them again if you don't want to. 